Hi, good day, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, attending today's uh, educational um, session. My name is Ron Nolasco from International Trade Council. Uh, before we start, I'll just do a quick audio check while we are waiting for other participants to log in. If you can hear me, can you please type in yes in the chat box? Okay, thank you, Minaj. All right, perfect. And I also guess that you can see the PowerPoint presentation and the video of the speaker. Okay, perfect. So uh, today's uh, educational session is Be Online or Irrelevant, Elevate Your Authority. Our speaker for today is Mr. Dave Hoth. Uh, he's a CEO of Reputation Rhino, known for his innovative leadership in online public relations, brand management, and digital marketing. His collaboration with marketing expert Kevin Harrington promises unprecedented growth. Dave's leadership style empowers his team and his unwavering commitment to excellence fuels the company's success. Beyond business, he's a dedicated family man, community volunteer, and student of human behavior, embodying strong Kansas City values. Colleagues praise him as a great mentor and leader in building online reputations for clients. This interactive workshop focuses on the importance of cultivating a strong online brand in today's interconnected world. It explores the significance of visibility, authority, and influence in digital space, highlighting their impact on brand reputation and business growth. The workshop also sheds light on the potential consequences of a poor online reputation, both tangible and intangible. Participants will be introduced to a proven six-step strategy for building a resilient online brand. By the end of the workshop, attendees will not only grasp the significance of a robust online brand, but will also acquire the knowledge and tools needed to protect and enhance it. Transforming it into a valuable asset, so get ready to learn, engage, and elevate your online brand presence. Just a quick reminder, uh, this is uh, there will be a free upcoming online certificate workshop from International Trade Council. All participants will receive a complimentary certificate of attendance. And um, if anyone from this uh, group is not yet a member of International Trade Council, you will be given an opportunity to sign up for a free membership that you will receive within seven days. So without any further ado, I, I'll have here Mr. David Park to start the presentation. Go ahead, sir. Awesome, Ron. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction there. And everybody else, guys, welcome. We're going to chat today about what Ron mentioned. Uh, we're going to talk about why you should be online or be irrelevant. It's your choice. Uh, why building an online brand is imperative in today's digital world. And it's a way that you can be more visible, authoritative, and influential. And we're going to go through all that and more in just a second. But uh, I figured I'd introduce myself a little bit differently here. So let's get into it. To say Dave Folk is a special human being is underselling. Because I don't think he's human. He's like a force of pure positivity, productivity, and empowerment. say they're going to do. Somebody that has the ability to start a business, to be able to grow a business, to even be able to scale a business, to even be able to exit. Well, that guy is Dave Falk. Dave's one of those guys that you can't help but like. His energy, his charisma, personality, Dave brings a personal and business infectiousness to every situation that he's involved with. He gets stuff done, he makes things happen, and he always finds a win in the situation. He really cares about what I want and has been able to give me great advice and great feedback and really dive into what the opportunity looks like for me. Dave has tackled some of the craziest, biggest projects that I've ever seen, whether it's working with celebrities, whether it's basically going up on stage and speaking. The guy is basically just not afraid of anything, and I love that about him. Every once in a while, you come across an individual who just changes the whole game. It's their experience, their authenticity, the fact that they're a go-giver. 
And I had that opportunity with Dave. He's one of the most gifted operators I've ever seen in business. He can elevate you to heights that you didn't think were in the building. He's fun. He's got good stories. He creates good stories. He's a family man. His heart's in the right place. And uh, I, I really can't speak any more highly of anybody I know. All right. Well, there we go. Guys, one of my favorite quotes is, your reputation is your strongest form of currency. And I shared that video for a purpose, and we're going to get into that here in just a minute. Um, I hope everybody can hear okay. Ron checked on that. So we're going to get into this. And for those that stick around till the end, I know everybody likes some free gifts. A couple things. I've got a couple free gifts to you coming at the very end of this uh, that you'll be able to collect from me. And two, we're going to open this up for Q&A at the very end. So if you've got questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box or ask the question at any point in time. And I promise you we'll get around to those at the very end. we got a special dedicated Q&A section. Um, we're going to kind of fly through the about me because I think the video did a good enough job uh, about that. If you want a couple things, there's going to be some opportunities to scan some stuff. So make sure you have your phone handy. There's going to be some QR codes uh, where you can scan some stuff on the screen. And if you want to learn more about me outside of this presentation, you go to dayfolk.com or even easier there. I told you it was coming. You can scan that QR code right there. And so the number one question generally when I do these presentations is, Dave, does my online brand really matter? Well, I have to answer a question with a question. I need to understand if everybody understands the difference between marketing and branding. Marketing is what you say about yourself. That's your social media channels. That's your website. That's your blog posts, right? That's you. That's how you're representing yourself to the world. Branding, on the other hand, is how is what other people say about you after you've left the room. And I wanted to make that distinction for you because if you think back to the intro video I just did, it did two things. One, hopefully it made you feel some sort of way about me, uh, that you're going to learn something of value today and I'm qualified to be able to speak to you today. And two, you didn't hear me say a single word on that video. It was everybody else that said things about me. That's branding. It's what they said about me. I didn't say a single word on the entire video. It was third-party edification because marketing is me going, hi, I'm Dave Folk and I'm awesome. Branding is getting somebody else to say, man, Dave Folk is awesome. The weight is held differently. And that's what we're going to talk about today is building your online brand. It's no longer just enough to market yourself. We're inundated with marketing. We're inundated with videos and reels and TikTok and you name it. What sets you apart today is branding and your online reputation. Because like I said earlier, reputation is your strongest form of currency. So let's get into it. Why should you care about building a brand and being more visible online? Well, guys, it's estimated that Google processes about 5.6 billion with a B searches per day. You break that down, that's 63,000 every second. I promise you, probably most everybody in this call has Googled something today. Uh, and I guarantee everybody's Googled something this week. Where you want to go eat, you looked up somebody, you researched a business, whatever it is, people are going to Google to start their research. People are going online before making their buying decisions. It's crazy. In the last three years alone, there's been a 617% increase of consumers going online to Google, Facebook, and other places to leave online reviews. 95% of consumers will trust an online review just as much as a personal recommendation from a friend. So if my mom tells me, hey, you got to go eat at this place, I'm going to trust what my mom tells me as much as an online review that I read, right? Starting to see how important that is. 78% of people said they look up information about businesses or people before they go online. And here's the crazy one. By the way, if you see a box and it's highlighted, it's probably really important. 74% of those people have already decided who they're going to do based business with based on the information that they found. So what is this saying? Let's break this down again. People are going online to research you, your personal brand as an individual, and your company. If they don't like what they see or if they don't see enough to confirm their, their buying preference, they're making their decision online. So the journey goes one of two ways. One, they start online before they ever call you. Or two, maybe you met them in person, met them at a trade show. They called in and had a conversation with you. They're going 
after the fact to confirm that the person that they met is legit uh, based on the findings of how they did it. And you have to understand the context of how people think today. We are negative by nature. We are a negative society. We don't count how many green lights we drove through. We count how many red lights we had to stop at. And so that's what people are doing when they go online. They're going online with the context of trying to discredit you or trying to find a reason why they shouldn't work with you or why you're a scam or not legit or not legit as the other person. And then when they find that one thing or read that one bad review, they go, ah, I knew it. It confirms their suspicion, right? That's what they're going online for. So if you're not controlling the narrative of online of what these people are seeing, the first impression is imperative today. We're going to talk more about that. Today's day and age, guys, I say it, I say it again, I'll say it every day of my life. The handshake has been replaced by the Google search. I'm a Midwest boy from Kansas City, and uh, I was grown to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eyes, and and that's just gone, right? It's the, the Google search has replaced the handshake in the digital world that we live in, and COVID has fast forwarded that. More eyeballs are online now more than ever, and people want to do business online. Um, you know, if it's an in-store purchase, they're still going online and reading about it and reading the reviews about it before they ever look at it in the store. You know, a business partner and friend of mine, Kevin Harrington, the original shark from Shark Tank says, every company, entrepreneur, and executive needs to take their brand and online reputation seriously. They need reputation right now. So moving on, how will being more authoritative help? Well, we talked a little bit about first impressions and guess what? You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. 68% of people believe that their first impression is accurate. What's funny is 76% of the time you're actually right. So 76% of the time your first impression is actually accurate. That's that gut feeling, that intuition that you have. So you should trust yourself more often. 65% of impressions are made by what we see. 65% of impressions are made by what we see. So what is somebody going to see when they go online and Google you? People are quick to judge. We like our opinions. We don't like to change our mind. So we talked about how we're negative by nature and we, we thrive on that. Well, according to a recent Cornell University study, time apparently doesn't change the fact of a bad first impression. So they did this study. Let me tell you about this. They did a study where they took two groups of people, group A and group P. They put group A in a room and they said, we're going to show you a series of pictures for one second and we want you to write down what type of person you think this is and how they made you feel. And then they went to group B and they asked each individual to make a certain face. Some were smiling, some were scowling, some looked angry, some looked sad, right? They just asked them to make a certain face. Then they took those images and showed them to group A for one second, mind you, one second. And they had to write down what they thought of that person. And anybody that had the scowl or the angry face or something like that, they didn't like him. They weren't trustworthy. They wouldn't do business with them, right? Not surprised. Here's the crazy part of that. Six months later, they invited both Group A and Group B to a network event, a mixer. They didn't know that they were Group A and B in the room. And they basically told Group A, hey, go network with these people. We're going to pull you aside after, and we're going to ask you what your impressions are of the people that you meet. The crazy part about that is group A met group B in person this time. They didn't realize six months ago, they saw a picture of this person for one second. They didn't know that they were the same people. And the crazy part about this story is what they said six months ago when they saw that person's picture for one second was still their impression of who they were when they met them in person six months later. So like I said, we are quick to judge and we don't like to change our minds. So here's a tale of two CEOs. What I did here is I just went online. Uh, I pulled up LinkedIn and I typed in CEO and I did Greater Tampa Bay. That's where I'm at. So I wanted to make this easy for me. And I, I grabbed a couple people off of there. So you can see Sean Stockdale. So I apologize, Andreas and Sean in advance, but thank you so much for uh, allowing to be my case study for this call today. So I just want to walk through in a tale of two stories, right? Two CEOs and what their online journeys tell about them. So I pull up Andreas' LinkedIn profile. He's got a good picture of him. He's got a background image. He's got a decent amount of followers. He's got some recent activity too, right? Okay, well, good, good stuff there. I pull up Sean's. Hmm, no image, generic stock photo. Um, and here's the funny thing. He provides advertising, brand marketing, and content marketing, and digital marketing services. Are, would you buy that from this? Do you get that impression from this LinkedIn profile? 
So then I went to the next step. I went to the Googles. Uh, I typed in their name, as you can see in the search bar, in just what pulled up on page one of Google. So I look at Andreas here and I can see, okay, he's got a website. Um, he was in Tech Times. He's got some good images down here. Um, it just keeps going. There's more relevancy there. I pull up his website. It's specifically about him. Um, I pull up the Tech Times article. Hey, meet the CEO who's disrupting the telemedicine technology. Uh, and then I just kept going. What, what was there? Uh, another article, another article, another article. Um, and then I pull up Sean. Same thing. I put Sean's name just as it was in, in LinkedIn on Google and, and pulled up. What do I see? Um, some social media profiles of a various amount of images of stock images and, and none of which I'm assuming are him actually. Um, and then it goes into just like profiles of, of who this person is. And I click into the link, same thing. I just clicked into them and it's a profile of, of data leads. So it's just a generic thing where somebody's put their information online. This one talks about, Hey, official USA. This is a Sunbiz report again. Who would you choose if you were an investor looking to invest money in one of those companies? If they were the same CEO in the same industry, who was more relevant? Who was more authoritative? If you were an investor, if you were an employee looking for a new job, which company do you think you'd rather go to work for? Which CEO do you think you'd rather go to work for? If you're a customer doing research, they sell the same services, they sell the same products, the same brands. Who are you going to pick? Pretty simple, right? Uh, generally, 99.9% .9 of people's hands are up for Andreas. The other 1% aren't paying attention at this point in the presentation. Anyway, uh, so if you were an investor, an employee, or a customer, who are you going to pick? It's Andreas, 10 times out of 10. So the question I asked you earlier that now is starting to weigh a little bit heavier on your shoulders is, what is somebody going to see when they Google you? What is somebody going to see when they Google you as an individual? What is somebody going to see when they Google your brand or your business? Are you represented online? with the best and most positive first impression that you can to solidify that relationship with the consumer or with an investor or with a potential employee. Next one, we talked about being a person of influence and why does this matter? Well, guys, people will buy from people when they know, like, and trust you. When this happens, you become influential. Remember, we talked about this earlier. 74% of people have already decided who they're most likely going to do business with based on the information that they found or didn't find online. And so you guys are going, well, Dave, how can somebody know I can trust me if they've never met me or spoke to me? Well, great question. And it's because you have to go online. You have to be where the people are. People are online. You have to be online. And as I said in the title of this talk, if you are not online, you are irrelevant. So having greater influence on online, uh, online helps buying with buying decisions. People are more likely to notice you. People with influence stand out in a group. Uh, an influential person actually forms and maintain, maintains relationships easier. They actually develop stronger relationships. Remember, 65% of what we think, 66 is based on what we see. So what are they seeing? Um, they, all, they feel like they know you before they've met you. Um, the average person is willing to spend 31% more on a retailer that has excellent reviews. Remember, we talked about this earlier. 95% of people trust a review online, whether it's true or not. Guess what? It's online, so it's true. Just as much as they would trust a, a recommendation from a friend or a family member. A digital presence gives you and your brand an ideal platform to communicate with consumers. It gives you the opportunity to set the narrative on who you are as a brand and to set yourself apart from the competitors. So we've kind of flown through this. We've established why you need to be more visible, why you need to be more authoritative, and why you need to be more influential. So let's go to the darker side of this and talk about what is a bad online reputation actually costing me? Well, more than you probably think. Number one, it costs you trust. Without trust, you can't keep or, or grow customers. You can't grow your business. The number one thing customers are looking for is do they trust you? Do they trust that the service that you're going to provide is good? Do they trust if they have an issue, you're going to help them with it? Do they trust that the sales process is going to go great? Do they trust that the product isn't a piece of crap, right? Do they trust you? And if there is an element of distrust based on what they see or bad reviews or not good images, think back to Andreas and Sean. 
who's who had a stronger trust with somebody if they did some research online or just googled page one of google leads leads are important in business 85 percent of people start their buying journey online and we know three quarters of them have already decided who they want to do business with before doing business with you guys this is making your ability to generate leads harder back in the day it used to be speed lead speed lead whoever can get to the lead first has a better chance now the problem is is you are missing leads you didn't even know you were missing because people are going online and reading about you researching you and you're a ghost maybe like sean you're not giving them that trust or maybe they worse there's something bad out there a bad article a bad video a bad review and people are seeing that and they're not even becoming a lead it's no longer about how fast you can close a lead it's 75 percent of your chance to even generate a lead is based on what people are seeing about you online sales revenues will fall uh, over 25 percent of a company's market value is directly attributable to its reputation i'm going to say that again 25%, one quarter of your market value is based on your reputation online. Seems like you should probably do something about that. Higher new retention costs. Again, we talked about that earlier. If you were an employee, would you rather go to work for Andreas or would you rather go to work for Sean? It is a proven fact that it, a company with a bad reputation is generally going to have to pay at least 10% more per hire just to attract people to come work there. And then the, the un, un, documented cost of stress and anxiety, right? The intangible cost of what is the constant worrying, uh, what others think of you or what might find out about you online is exhausting. So what can you do about it? Well, here are six steps you can actually do on your own to build a digital fortress around your business. The number one thing, prevent bad reviews. Customers often rant online as a last resort. Give them an easy way to voice their grievance before they take their complaints online. Right. Um, if you call my company, one of the things on the voice prompt is, hey, if you have a complaint or a compliment, press this. And it sends it actually straight through to like one of the executives voicemail so we can handle it. We're giving them a forum to complain before they go online on the email signature. Um, same thing. If you have a complaint or a compliment, please direct those to our CEO at here or whatever, whoever's going to handle that for you. Give them a place to air that out. If they need to jump on the phone and tell you how much of a jerk you are and how much of your salesperson is a terrible person, take it, let them get it out, apologize, move on. Prevent it from being a bad review online, which is going to cost you exponentially more in the long run. I promise. Something easy, monitor the web. Guys, okay, sign up for Google Alerts so you know when somebody's saying something about you online. Uh, you know, again, growing up, you know, knowing is half the battle. Well, if you don't know, you, you're 50% of the way in the dark already. So sign up for Google Alerts. It's free. Put your company name in there. Put your personal name in there. There's other services out there like critical mentions and things like that uh, that can go a lot deeper and actually monitor your social profiles as well. But guys, monitoring it allows you to get out in front of it um, while it's fresh. Try and be proactive as possible to make things right. Be social. Guys, social media platforms are don't cost anything. Um, regularly publish posts and videos on social profiles. Um, don't just do this as a way to generate leads. Do this as a way to educate. Can you educate, motivate, or inspire with these? Um, you know, I have people all the time talking about, you know, I, I, a guy who makes tables, right? I said, do some small videos of the process of how you find the trees that you're going to cut down, the a video on cutting the trees down, how you shape the table, how you do it. Like he created 30 small videos of the entire step-by-step -step process and it revolutionized. He got so many people that were like interested in how he made these beautiful crafts of art. So don't think because maybe what you do isn't sexy, the process isn't sexy, that you can't find ways to relate with your audience. Your audience is looking for ways to relate with you. You're not trying to relate to everybody else. You're just trying to relate to the people that are relatable to you. So yes, if you put content out there, some people are going to hate it, but the people that like it are the people that are going to want to do business with you anyway and spend money with you. Who cares if the people that are never going to pay you a dime don't like it because they're never going to pay you a dime. We want the people who are going to spend money with you to like it, right? We want to attract the people that we want to do business with and we want to detract and stiff arm the people who we don't want to do business with away. Number three, guys, request reviews. Ask a happy customer to leave you a review on your company or provide personal testimonies. 
Um, this can also help suppress negative feedback because if you've got 10 reviews and two of them are bad, you probably got a pretty bad star rating. But if you've got 100 reviews and two of them are bad, that tells a very different story. And a crazy fact is it takes 12 positive reviews to offset two negative reviews. Or I'm sorry, one negative review. So it's a 12 to one ratio. So for that's how much people look at that negative contents. Remember that we, we have a negative nature in us. We want to count the stoplights we got stuck at. One negative review, it takes 12 positive to offset that in their mind. So you have to have 24 solid reviews, 26 reviews. You can only have two bad to even have a chance in this consumer's mind. Pretty crazy, right? Step number five, submit press releases. Guys, if nobody else is writing about you, do it yourself. And the press release is important because this is that third-party edification. That's that brand building that we talked about, not just the marketing side of it. Um, a positive press release about a charitable donation uh, or something like that, your involvement in the local community, local media, local news stations will eat that up. Um, so submit some press releases. And then address negative content. Do not be an ostrich. Do not um, ignore it. And God, please, 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 please don't engage it. Um, don't get defensive. If somebody leaves you a bad review, don't go online and tell them why they're wrong, right? Even if they are wrong, tell them, we're so sorry we couldn't meet your expectations. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to learn from this. Will you call us, invite them to come back? Will you call us so we can make this right? A lot of the times you get them on the phone, you give them that chance, number one, a chance to complain. You can work something out where they'll go back and delete the review. Hey, we're so sorry. But the other thing, how you respond to the address, addressing negative content online is super important because guess what? 85% of people start their buyer journey online and three quarters of those people are determining who they want to do business with. And if they see you on there as a jerk responding to somebody else's jerk, they're going to, I don't want to work with that jerk. Make sense? And then the last bonus step, work with a professional. Uh, if the content is particularly damaged and can't be resolved by you, consult a reputation management professional or legal counsel. Work with a team of experienced professionals who will work to customize an affordable strategy for you. Uh, so that's your bonus step. Six there. Guys, five ways. We're going to fly through this so we can get to the Q&A. Uh, five ways to control your online reputation. Build your reputation. This is the number one thing that you can do for your brand for future reputation saboteurs. One of the biggest things you talk about, um, Kevin Harrington, I mentioned him earlier, and he has been in business you know, for 40 years, legendary entrepreneur, had a great track record, and he ended up in named in a lawsuit that ended up going away anyway. Um, but because he was named in a lawsuit, he ended up on page one of TMZ. It was all over the media. Um, and now it was costing him millions of dollars. He got pulled off a stage. He lost opportunities to do business with people because he didn't do anything to prevent it. Uh, so he says when his reputation was attacked, he had to come to us to help him fix it. Well, if you put some time, money, and effort into it ahead of time, you can help mitigate that because it's not if. It's when somebody says something bad about you or when somebody comes after you that you want to be prepared. So having a proactive strategy is absolutely imperative um, that you can do. So get out in front of it. Start getting your SEO in order. Uh, start getting your online reputation management in order. So that way you can build that what we call a digital fortress around your business. Turn a negative into a positive. I mentioned this earlier. Um, once you build this, inc I encourage you to seek opportunities to gain a new loyal client uh, from a negative experience. I, I mentioned this just a minute ago. Build relationships. Be as helpful and generous, generous as you can. Demonstrate your values. Put all the things that you want to say into action. This goes back to what I said. It's be social. In, uh, inspire, motivate, educate, right? Inspire, motivate, educate the people who want to do business with you. That's how you're going to build a community. That's how you're going to build a following. That's how you're going to build relationships. Um, and these are people, what's funny is these are actually going to be the people who, once you build that community, you build that following, they're going to come to your defense should somebody try and attack you, right? So it's not just you against that one person now. Now you're going to start seeing other people be like, no, that's not my experience at all. I've worked with this company. They were fantastic, right? That's what you want. You want a community of people who are going to be your advocates. Be the best. Uh, you, want to be the, you want to be the best at what you do, right? Stand out. Be a thought leader in your industry. Be a subject matter in your industry. Be the person that is most known for the thing that you do, and you do it the best, and you do it better than anybody else, and you tell the world about it. That's important. And then have a long-term online reputation management strategy in place. 
Um, it's not if, it's when this is going to happen. So that's what I'm talking about is take some time, be proactive, get a strategy in place. Um, knowing the answers to the questions before is in, essential. So when you do find yourself under a crisis, you're going to know how to respond and what to do. If you'd like some help with that, or if you want to know kind of just how you stack up, here is free gift number one. I would be honored to have one of my highly trained professionals jump on a call with you. Um, talk about you as your personal brand or your business's brand. You can scan that code. So again, take your phone right out, scan the QR code, and you can book a free action plan call with one of my highly trained associates uh, or even me. I might, I might jump in on some of those calls as well. Um, the International Trade Council, uh, I worked with Ron and we secured the opportunity for anybody who joins us here through ITC to be able to get this free opportunity to jump on the phone and just figure out where you stack up. Um, so how do you stack up? What can you do about it? You'll leave that call educated on where you're at, where, where you currently are, um, understanding where you want to go and maybe uh, what you need to do to be able to get there. Gift number two, we love free gifts, is this is my book, The Ultimate Guide for Online Reputation Management. Scan that right there and it'll take you to an opportunity to be able to download that thing free of charge. Um, there's a lot of really good relevant information in there. It's this presentation tenfold. It goes a lot more specific and granular. We only have so much time on these things. Uh, so make sure and scan that right there and get your free gift. And we have come to the Q&A section of this portion. Uh, so we had 45 minutes. We're 35 in. And uh, there we go. So I'm going to go over here and see if I've got some Q&A questions that have come in. Yes, we have uh, some questions in the Q&A tab, uh, Dave. I'm sorry, Ron, I didn't catch you. We have a questions on the Q&A part. Of okay, this. perfect. Uh, is online visibility more effective than advertising on Google and Facebook? Well, so again, that's marketing versus branding, right? Marketing is advertising on Google and Facebook. That may get you the eyeballs for the search term that you're looking for. But in let's say that they see an ad on Facebook and you have to understand human behavior here, right? Um, when they click on that ad and they go to your website, right? More often than not, they're busy doing something else. You're, it's what's called a pattern interrupt. When they're doing something or scrolling through social media and they, or Google or Facebook and they see an ad and they go to a lander page, maybe they're interested, but maybe they have to go back to their work. Maybe they have to go back to their cubicle. Maybe they were on a bathroom break. Um, more often than not, what it does is it, they will go and search your brand back later. So if it, it, there's interest and intent. So if they click on an ad and go to your website, there is an interest to that. Meaning, oh, I'm potentially interested in this ad that I just saw or the service that they're offering or product. More often than not, they're not going to jump right into a funnel, give you all their information or buy right there. Very rarely does that happen. More often what happens is when they find some time later on, they can sit down at home, uh, the kids are home from soccer practice, whatever it is, they will then go back and search your company or brand online. And then what is the first impression that they're going to see of you? So they really work in tune with each other. Online visibility is very important based on the first impression that you want to substantiate them clicking on the ads. Is this ad, is this company as relevant as they said that they were in the ad or on their website? Uh, hopefully that answered your question for you. Uh, next one, it's a little bit longer. Uh, if there are so many others that share your name and come up with Google searches more often because of their positions, what are some ways that I can get out in front? more? I'm already posting articles and speak all over podcasts. Jennifer, fantastic. Glad you're already doing some of that stuff. That is great. So get out there and do that stuff. So this comes into more of a online reputation management strategy. And so I'm going to try and not get too technical for you here. Google is nothing more than an algorithmic search engine that brings back, based on the search term that it's given, the most relevant information that it can. AKA, if I go to Google and I type in Jennifer Glass, that's the search term, Google is going to bring back what it considers the most relevant information. So by doing stuff is good, right? That's, that's stage one. How you get it to rank and change the online narrative is the optimization of that content or the placement of that content. If you're placing something on Jennifer's blog, 
versus I place you in Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal's domain authority is 100x greater than your blog. But I don't know your blog. Maybe your blog's awesome. Uh, is generally the domain authority of where the placement of the content is going. And is it optimized so Google goes, oh, this is very important and it's more relevant than the stuff that I'm showing. And so ways you can do that is uh, traditional online reputation management, um, SEO, backlinking, connecting things together. And that's really, you've evolved kind of the, to the next stage of needing to optimize the content that you're doing. So if you're already doing content, that's step one, that's better than nothing. Step two is beginning to optimize that content. And that's a little bit more of a technical conversation. So if I were you, I would scan that QR code and book an action call and kind of walk through that with somebody. Uh, Jay, how can you avoid false and irrelevant profile information on LinkedIn profiles? Well, own it, uh, get out in front of it, have your information out there. And again, that's set up on a Google alert uh, or an alert platform, or if somebody's mentioning you, you can address it right away. So you can contact LinkedIn. Um, unfortunately, you know, I wish there were a perfect world where you could prevent scammers and, and hackers and, and jokesters from doing and saying bad things or that there's really not. So the best thing you can do is one, have a dominant online profile ahead of time. So being proactive, which we talked about, um, having a good strategy in place for if it does happen, how to manage it, um, and, and being alerted to when it does happen. All right. Any other questions, guys? Go ahead and type them in. Man, that was easy. Uh, I'm going to go back to the chat panel and make sure that there's somebody just didn't put some uh, questions in there. Can you speak about who a professional is? Well, I mean, a professional is anybody who's deemed a uh, professional in, in any aspect, you know, in, in normal terms, a lot of people talk about uh, doctors, lawyers, right? Those are what are considered professions or professional professions, um, financial planners, things like that. Um, but a professional is somebody who is a subject matter expert or a thought leader in their industry. And you know more than somebody else does on the topic that somebody would want to pay you for. Um, if you are well read enough on a topic and have done it experienced i'm a big believer in doing the work um, if you can do the work and have done the work successfully and you can provide a track record on doing that work um, you become a professional right a doctor they have to go through a lot of school uh, then they have to go through a residency so they they're hold, they're held to a higher regard because of the schooling that they have and the fact that they have to go through practical application of that schooling before they can just start practicing as a doctor Can you also talk about your last point, have a long-term? Um, you're going to have to give me a little bit more detail on that, Anthony. Um, I don't understand what the question is. I'm going to keep scrolling back up. I tried doing the Google Alerts, and I can confirm there's a good way. Oh, good. Awesome, Anthony. I'm glad you're doing um, Google uh, Alerts and having some success with that uh, presentation here. We have a few questions in the community. Okay. Perfect. Yep. I just wanted to scroll through that. Um, must a company's mission, vision, and values be tied to its branding strategies? Well, scenario, it doesn't have to be, but I'm a big believer in that your why and your purpose is why people want to do business with you. So having a strong vision, having a strong value, having a strong purpose um, is really, it goes back to remember people that want to build, be a following that they buy into that and they feel that when they do business with you. Um, so I would highly recommend that they do, um, go together with brand strategy. Um, I think that is the best thing, but they don't necessarily have to. Um, but again, that's, you know, your business practices, but I, I don't believe in a bait and switch, right? Tell it, sell them one thing and then provide something different. And I'm not so saying that's what you're saying here, but I would highly recommend in any business or organization, you get a solid vision, you get a solid mission and you get solid core values and people can feel that in um, your, your branding. They can feel that on your website. They can feel that in the service that you're providing them as an organization. 
Um, what will you say about the ratio of online social media presence of an organization for branding with traditional ways of advertising versus public relations? So this kind of goes back. That's a great question. Uh, so this kind of goes back to the, at the beginning of the presentation, I talked about marketing versus branding. So marketing is what you say about yourself. That's your social media presence. Uh, that's your website. That's what you're saying about you. Branding is what others are saying about you. That's PR, that's interviews with a journalist, that's microsites, that's reviews, that's online reputation management. Um, it's actually helping you build a brand. And so in a perfect world, it's a good combination or a good mix of both of these. Because if you're investing in uh, social media, if you're investing in Facebook ads, or if you're investing in Google paid ads and digital marketing, a solid branding strategy is going to complement that and actually make it more powerful. Because remember, you have to take human behavior into this. Human behavior is they see an ad, they have an interest. It's, the, it's a relevant topic that they're interested in. They click on it. They go to your website. When they go back and search for your company, which they will, what are they going to find? Does that first impression of the search that they found for after they went through your marketing funnel and the indoctrination emails and the follow-up emails make them feel that they want to trust you. Remember, because it comes back down to trust. So a good online branding strategy is going to develop a trust with them where necessarily a social media, um, uh, just a social strategy won't, unless you're focused on inspiring, motivating, and educating through your social channel. So I think it's a good combination of both. Um, the exact mix ratio of, let's say, 50-50 or whatever is going to be a little bit dependent on um, your industry, what you're selling, your client journey, like a service-based industry where it's they're a monthly recurring revenue or they're a client for a long time. I feel like branding has a higher authoritative need um, because they're going to be around for a long time. If you sell water bottle caps, uh, that's a one-time low-cost purchase you may not have to invest as much in a branding. I hope that answers your question. But if you're a doctor, um, absolutely. People look at you very differently. We work with a lot of doctors, a lot of professionals, um, because you know orthodontists are online searching for the best orthodontist to take their kids to to get their braces on. Um, and what they see online is really important to them from a branding perspective. Um, I hired three marketing companies in two years, no improvement sales. It is a waste of time or am I wrong? Well, I can't speak to uh, the marketing companies you worked with. No, I think marketing is, is vitally important. Marketing and sales go together. Um, I think there could be a multitude of things like this. Um, one, did your online brand support the marketing efforts that they were doing? Did they do good ads and then you were a ghost online? Uh, people were like, nope, I don't want to do business with them. Right. So th I think there's there's way too much to unpack in this question. Uh, to be able to answer it on this call and without being able to talk to you, maybe more one on one. So again, I would book a call, but um, the right strategy executed the right way um, with the right marketing complemented by the right branding strategies. And, and two, what was your delivery on it? Did they send you leads, but you didn't call them for a week? Um, right. So there's a lot of variables that go into that. Some of it may have been the marketing company's fault or some of it may have been your processes on the back end. Uh, so without having more information there, it would be really hard for me to answer that. But no, I think any company who is invested in sticking around a long time or growing uh, absolutely needs to have a marketing budget and a branding budget. How should we deal with a competitor's targeted campaign of misinformation? Well, if... <laughs> Either you control the narrative online of what people are saying about you or Google does. In this case, Google is controlling it because you're not putting out enough relevant information uh, to counter this. So this is a perfect example of an online reputation management. And the reason you should be proactive, because it, it, as I said before, it's not if it happens, it's when it happens, um, whether it's a competitor coming after you with a targeted campaign of misinformation. If you don't have anything out there to mitigate this, it's going to hurt a lot more. And if you're not doing something to combat it or outshine it, remember Google's a search algorithm that's going to bring back the most relevant information that it has. If what your competitor out there is more relevant than what you're putting out there, that's a problem. They're winning. 
Um, you know, they said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So if you don't have your tree of online reputation management, your fortress built, everybody that's on this call should, uh, this is a great question because this is, if it not, if it happens, it's when it happens. So coming up with a good strategy of how you can address this, um, how you can show people, educate and inspire, motivate through um, different ways. I don't know much about your business or what you're doing, um, but there's definitely ways that you can get out in front of this, but you have to speak louder than they are. And you, your message has to resonate with your audience better than theirs does. I have one question in the chat box. Which social media do you think is efficient for training advertisings? Um, that's really going to depend on where your demographic is. Um, so you have to understand the human behavior. It comes back to this. Who is using what social media platforms, right? Um, somebody in their 50s or 60s probably isn't on TikTok. Um, so is your clients, are they 21-year-old college kids or are they seasoned executives, right? So LinkedIn may be a better platform to talk to doctors or lawyers where TikTok may be a better platform to advertise for that demographic. So it really comes back to who is your core value? Um, who is your core avatar of a client? Um, and then it's kind of a combination of both. Um, are they starting their search on Google? And it depends also on the product that you're selling. So it's really hard to say knowing it, it has a lot to depend on who your core audience is and what product or service you're selling. But um, I think, you know, you can have a success across a multitude of platforms. Facebook, Instagram are still very successful uh, for advertising. TikTok is becoming more successful for certain businesses. LinkedIn is becoming very successful. And Google is the number one search uh, engine out there. So if you're doing Google PPC or paid per click um, for certain keyword search terms, if people are searching for those, it's, a, it's about getting out in front of them and have more eyeballs on it. Uh, so Anthony, that uh, is marketing alone or branding go side by side marketing. That's I've kind of answered this a few times. Absolutely, marketing is going to bring you the eyeballs. Branding is going to help develop the trust for them. So it's not just important to get eyeballs uh, to your product or service. It's about developing a trust so somebody know, likes, and trusts you, your product or your service, and they want to do business with you. So branding is absolutely critical in that trust building phase. All right, Ron, I think that's all we've got on Q&A coming in. If you guys have some more Q&As, throw them in the chat or throw them in the Q&A panel and we'll get to those real quick. Um, yes. We're still open for a few questions. If you have any other question, just please feel free to type in your question in the Q&A panel. Um, while we are waiting, I'm, I just want to um, remind everyone that um, this webinar is recorded and um, it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you would like to review and uh, to check the recording again, you can just go ahead and search International Trade Council. As mentioned as well, um, we will be sending a complimentary certificate of attendance. And uh, if you are not yet already a member of International Trade Council, we will be sending you a link in the next seven days to register as a free member. I don't see any other questions. Um, Awesome, Ron. I threw the, the QR code back up there for one more second. I know some people sure. with those Q and A's that came in uh, may be better served with some deeper technical conversation with us. There's that QR code that we've set up with the ITC for you guys to be able to get a free action plan call with us today. Scan that, take a screenshot of it, and that, that'll book you by, right back around to somebody here at Reputation Rhino. Um, other than that, man, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. I hope everybody learned something. I hope I was able either to educate you, inspire you, or motivate you today. Uh, so guys, thank you so much. Dave Folk, CEO of Reputation Rhino, and I will remind you to be fucking awesome. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again in the next educational webinars. Thank you. Have a good day. Awesome. Bye.